So, in this lecture we are going to look at um, uh, three applications involving uh, psychrometric principles. The first one um, uh, is adiabatic mixing of uh, two streams and this uh, probably may be considered as an application that comes in HVAC. The other two uh, applications may be classified as uh, other applications of psychrometric principles. Okay. In uh, HVAC, uh, we mentioned that we mentioned four unit processes namely uh, heating slash uh, cooling and we said the humidification, humidification slash dehumidification as the four uh, unit operations. Of course, mixing of uh, two streams may also uh, be considered as a psychrometric application because uh, we can adjust uh, the, um, uh, the moisture content or temperature of an air stream by mixing it with another air stream at an appropriate uh, with an appropriate moisture content and temperature. Okay. So, that is also possible without adding uh, heat or removing uh, heat from the air stream without adding or removing uh, water from the air stream. Its um, uh, temperature and humidity may be adjusted by simply mixing it with another stream okay. and that is the uh, uh, application that we are going to consider first. Okay. So, here we have an insulated uh, mixing chamber. So, this is the mixing chamber we have seen this before. So, this is an insulated mixing chamber. So, we have an air stream uh, coming in at state 1, another air stream coming in at state 2 and an exiting air stream. Okay. So, both um, uh, 1 and 2 all the air streams are actually moist air streams. Let us say that our idea is to um, uh, is to control the temperature and humidity of uh, let us say stream 1. Okay. And we want to control it in such a way that we get a desired value for um, uh, temperature and uh, humidity ratio of the uh, exiting stream. Okay. That is generally the idea. Okay. So, if we do a uh, mass balance of dry air across the uh, mixing chamber, we get m dot a 1 plus m dot a 2 equal to m dot a 3. Okay. Uh, water balance across the mixing chamber assuming that no condensation takes place. So, the amount of vapor that comes in through 1 plus amount of vapor that comes in through 2 is the amount of vapor that leaves uh, at uh, 3. Okay. And if we write this in terms of uh, omega by using the definition of uh, the humidity ratio, we may uh, write this like this and if you rearrange, we may actually finally uh, come up with an expression for omega 3 which is the humidity ratio of the exiting stream. So, if I know omega 1, omega 2 uh, and the mass flow rates, omega 3 may be evaluated. On the other hand, if I desire a certain omega 3 and I want to adjust uh, omega 2 so that uh, I get that uh, omega 3, then we may evaluate omega 2 from this expression. It is possible to do both. It is possible to predict the uh, humidity ratio of the exiting stream or it is possible to come up with a value for the humidity of one of the incoming streams so that the exiting stream has a particular value. Application of SFE to the control volume uh, gives rise to the uh, following equation <coughs> uh, Q dot and W x dot are both 0, Q dot 0 because the mixing chamber is insulated. So, we can come up with an expression for H 3 star uh, which is the uh, specific enthalpy on a dry air basis for the exiting stream. Okay. Assuming that H 1 star, H 2 star and the mass flow rates are known, this allows us to evaluate H 3 star and hence along with omega 3, the uh, exit uh, temperature and the relative humidity uh, may be evaluated using this. Now, we may rearrange the expression for omega 3. Uh, like this. So, if you look at the expression for uh, omega 3. So, if we rearrange this expression, we may write this as omega 3 minus omega 1 over omega 2 minus omega 1 to be m dot a 3 over m dot a 2. 
I am sorry, uh, m dot a 2 over m dot a 1. omega 3 minus omega 1 over omega 2 minus omega 3. I am sorry, I made a mistake. Omega 2 minus omega 3. Oops. In the same manner, this may be rearranged as shown here. So, this shows that omega 3 minus omega 1 over omega 2 minus omega 3 is equal to h 3 star minus h 1 star over h 2 star minus h 3 star. And if we rearrange this uh, like this, then uh, this shows that in a, a psychrometric chart uh, which has omega on the vertical axis and enthalpy axis like this. So, this is uh, h star. This uh, shows that this is the equation for a straight line in this coordinate space. So, uh, points 1, 2 and 3 lie on the same straight line in the psychrometric chart for adiabatic mixing of two streams. Okay. If there is heat loss, then of course, this will not be true. This is true only for adiabatic mixing of two streams. Okay. Let us now uh, go through a worked example. So, in the previous example, consider replacing the heating section with the mixing section to uh, accomplish the same objective. Okay. So, if you look at the previous example, so here uh, we had a heating section. So, this was the heating section. So, we want to replace the heating section with the mixing section to accomplish the same objective, which means that air at 100 uh, percent relative humidity 7.5 degrees Celsius enters the mixing section and we want air to leave at 22 degrees Celsius and 40 percent relative humidity. Okay. And also such that omega 2 is equal to omega 3. Okay, so, these are the conditions that we had in the heating section. We will impose the same conditions on the mixing section except that it is adi adiabatic. Okay. So, let us see uh, what we have here. Okay. So, this means that in the mixing section, if you go back to the illustration of the mixing section, uh, this corresponds to inlet 1 corresponds to what we had here. Let us see. 30 degree Celsius 80 percent, uh, I am sorry, uh, inlet uh, 1 corresponds to 7.5 degree Celsius and 100 percent relative humidity. Okay. And this corresponds to 22 degree Celsius and 40 percent relative humidity. So, what we want to find out uh, is the following. I am going to send in uh, ambient air. Um, uh, ambient air at 30 degree Celsius. I do not know the relative humidity. I want to adjust uh, the, uh, I am sorry, not ambient air. I want to send in air at 30 degree Celsius. I want to determine the volume flow rate and the relative humidity of this air so that the exit conditions that I uh, seek may be accomplished. So, this means that, so air at 30 degree Celsius and unknown phi and unknown volume flow rate. comes out so that this can be accomplished. And remember additional requirement here that we imposed was that uh, omega 1 equal to, I am sorry, omega, omega 3 equal to omega 1. So, no explicit addition or removal of water except whatever comes in through air stream, the moist air stream uh, at 2. Okay. So, this is the nomenclature for this problem. So, using this nomenclature, so we have m dot a uh, at one point, I am sorry, this also, this information uh, can also be included here 1.1236. So, this is 1.1236 kg per minute. So, 1.1236 kg per minute of dry air at 7.5 degree Celsius comes in, relative humidity uh, 100 percent comes in. 
and air at 30 degree Celsius unknown uh, relative humidity uh, unknown volume flow rate is mixed with this. So, that uh, we have a mixture at uh, 22 degree Celsius 40 percent relative humidity that leaves the uh, that leaves the mixing chamber. Notice that omega uh, we have uh, explicitly stated I am sorry uh, we have explicitly constrained omega 1 to be equal to uh, or omega 3 to be equal to omega 1. So, that omega 2 is also equal to omega 1. So, if you look at this expression, if you look at this expression for omega 1 to be equal to uh, omega 3 what we would uh, require then is that omega 2 also be equal to omega 3. That is the only way this expression may be satisfied. So, uh, so we know the, uh, uh, the humidity ratio at the uh, inlet of the incoming air that is at inlet 2 and we also know the temperature there. So, from the psychrometric chart we can get uh, phi 2 to be equal to 25 percent. So, basically since we are requiring that uh, omega 1 should be equal to omega 3. After adiabatic mixing the expression uh, for omega 3 then suggests that omega 2 also has to be equal to omega 1. So, that is what allows us to uh, fix the omega 2 the unknown uh, value for omega 2 ok. So, temperature is available omega 2 is available. So, from the chart we can get phi 2 to be 25 percent and uh, the specific volume of uh, dry air to be 0 0.87 and H 2 star to be 47 ok. I am going to let you look it up from the psychrometric chart. Now, we apply SFE to the mixing process as before and we now rearrange this so that we can get m dot a 2 from this ok. And uh, all the other quantities in this expression are known. So, we get m dot a 2 to be 1.9167 kg per minute and since we normally require uh, values to be in uh, uh, units of meter cube per minute this may be converted to 1.6676 meter cube per minute of dry air at inlet 2. So, this shows how um, we can actually replace the heating section with the mixing section to accomplish the same objective subject to the same constraints ok. So, in that sense mixing may also be considered as, uh, as an additional unit process in HVAC. So, we can accomplish our end objective by more than one means drying I am sorry heating, cooling, humidification, dehumidification and mixing. The next example that we are going to look at involves drying and this would as I said be classified as other applications of psychrometric principles ok. So, uh, wet paddy at 25 degree Celsius that contains one third moisture by weight. So, which means that if you have 1 kg of uh, wet paddy uh, one third uh, kg is water and the remaining two thirds is the actual dry paddy ok. So, this has to be dried completely before being stored to prevent rotting that is customarily done ok. The paddy is usually wet after harvesting and it has to be dried before it can be uh, stored otherwise it will start rotting. Now, hot air is to be used uh, for this purpose ambient air at 25 degree Celsius one atmosphere 50 percent relative humidity with the volume flow rate of 250 meter cube per minute is heated to 60 degree Celsius ok. The hot air is then sent to the drying section where the paddy is dried determine the power required in the heating section and the maximum mass flow rate of wet paddy that can be dried assume constant pressure no heat loss ok. So, we have two sections here. So, this is the heating section uh, 
and this is the drying section. So, let us label the state 1, uh, this as 2 and the exit state as 3. So, ambient air at 25 degrees Celsius, 50 percent relative humidity enters the uh, heating section. So, we can retrieve from the chart omega 1 to be 0 0.01 kg vapor per kg dry air. Specific volume may also be uh, retrieved from the table H1 as well as H1 star. And the mass flow rate uh, at the inlet may be evaluated. So, let us see here. So, 25 degrees Celsius and 50 percent relative humidity that is state 1. So, state 1 is here. Let me uh, choose a different color for this purpose. So, state 1 is here 25 degrees Celsius and 50 percent relative humidity. Notice that this is the line that corresponds to 50 percent relative humidity. So, that is state 1. So, we may retrieve omega specific volume and H star. So, this is H1 star, this is omega 1 from the chart. So, the air is heated to 60 degrees Celsius and if you look at the uh, schematic here, so the temperature at the end of this is 60 degrees Celsius, but there is no addition or removal of water in the heating section which means omega 2 equal to omega 1. So, that means uh, state 2 omega 2 is equal to omega 1 and the temperature is 60 degree Celsius. So, temperature 60 degree Celsius omega 2 equal to omega 1. So, this is state 2 and we may uh, look up H2 star from the psychrometric chart. Okay. So, mass flow rate of uh, air that is coming in may be evaluated like this. So, for the hot air omega 2 equal to omega 1 because there is no uh, water that is added or removed, temperature is known. So, we can retrieve H2 star. So, the heat that is added in the heating section may be evaluated by applying SFEE to the heating section that gives uh, Q dot H to be 167.64 kilowatts. Now, we are asked to evaluate for the given volumetric flow rate of air, we are asked to evaluate the maximum mass flow rate of wet paddy that can be dried. So, the maximum if we want the paddy to leave completely dry, okay, then the uh, air the maximum and that too maximum uh, mass flow rate of wet paddy, this both this then uh, dictate that the air that leaves must be saturated that is the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can absorb. So, the maximum mass flow rate of wet paddy corresponds to that condition. Okay. So, at the exit we say that, so at the exit we say phi 3 equal to 100 percent. So, <coughs> the state at the exit of the uh, yeah, and the exit of the drying section will be fully saturated. Okay. So, if we do a mass balance of water in the drying section, we have m dot w that is picked up from the paddy to be equal to m dot a times omega 3 minus omega 2. Okay. So, this is the amount of water that is picked up from the wet paddy. Omega 3 is not known, but m dot a is known. So, we have one equation now and steady flow energy equation applied to the drying section gives the following right this is the um, uh, this comes from the um, uh, water that is picked up from the uh, drying section so we here we are assuming uh, implicitly that and there is no appreciable change in the enthalpy of the paddy okay if uh, properties of the paddy are known that can also be accounted for but for the sake of simplicity here, we are assuming that there is no appreciable change in the enthalpy of the uh, dry paddy itself. Okay. <coughs> so, if we substitute the known values, H3 star is not known. Okay. 
So, let me uh, indicate this in uh, in red here. So, H 3 star is not known and omega 3 is also not known, but we have one equation uh, that describes omega 3 which we have already used ok. Remember m dot w is not known here ok. So, m dot w is not known omega 3 is also not known ok. So, we replace m dot w here with the previous equation that we have. So, now we end up with uh, one equation uh, which contains seemingly contains two unknowns ok. Remember one more information is available and that is phi 3 equal to 100 percent. So, that means that we know that the uh, uh, the outlet state or state 3 lies along uh, the phi equal to 100 uh, percent uh, curve. So, um, uh, you know strictly speaking we really do not have two unknown. So, if I take any point let us say any state along the phi equal to 100 curve, then once I fix the state it is uh, H 3 and omega 3 are automatically known. So, once that state is fixed both these quantities are known. So, strictly speaking there is only one unknown which is uh, the, uh, the temperature of the uh, exiting air stream. Uh, so, once I take the temperature of the exiting air stream both H 3 star and omega 3 are known. And so, this equation actually has to be solved iteratively ok. So, what we can do is the best way to go forward is to guess a value for T 3 and locate the state on the psychrometric chart. So, guess a value for T 3 and then locate a state. So, let us say that you know we uh, guess. So, we guess the temperature to be let us say uh, um, 26, 27 let us say uh, 25 degrees Celsius which is physically not uh, correct, but let us say that we choose it to be uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Then we retrieve H 3 star from here and omega 3 and we um, plug these values into this equation and see whether the equation is satisfied. If it is not satisfied then we adjust the value of T 3 and keep doing this until this equation is satisfied. So, uh, if you do this after about one or two iterations you should be able to show that uh, T 3 is equal to 27.5 degree Celsius and H 3 star is 86.5 and omega comes out to be 0 0.0233 that is what is shown in this chart. So, this actually comes after. So, this actually comes after a few iterations. The most important thing is that phi 3 is equal to 100 that is very important phi 3 equal to 100 percent sorry. So, the mass flow rate of wet paddy uh, may then be evaluated as 3 times m dot w right m dot uh, w here is the uh, water that is absorbed from the wet paddy. And so, the and we are given that um, for in every kg of wet paddy one third is water two thirds remaining two thirds is uh, dry paddy. So, the mass flow rate of wet paddy maximum that can be uh, dried is three times uh, uh, the mass flow rate of water that is picked up. So, that comes out to be 11.633 kg per minute. So, you can see um, you can see that um, psychrometric principles are useful not only in HVAC predominantly in HVAC, but also in other applications which are uh, very practical and uh, real life uh, sort of applications like the one that we saw just now. The uh, next application that we are going to look at is that of a cooling tower ok. Now, uh, you may have seen this let us see I recall seeing this ah, when we discussed uh, the Rankine cycle. So, in the Rankine cycle uh, I stated that we had looked at all the components in this uh, in this diagram except the uh, except the cooling tower 
okay and that is what we are going to look at now okay so basically the cooling tower is used in the condenser to cool the water that comes from the turbine so it as you can see it follows its own circuit so the cooled water from the condenser enters uh, i'm sorry cooled water from the cooling tower enters the condenser it then picks up the heat from the uh, from the uh, saturated mixture that comes from the low pressure turbine and then leaves at a higher uh, higher temperature okay notice that this is in a separate circuit and the water from the turbine runs in a separate circuit actually that is at a sub atmospheric pressure as i had mentioned uh, before okay so basically we have uh, uh, water from the cooling tower which enters the condenser at uh, about ambient temperature and when it leaves usually it leaves at temperatures around 50 or 60 degrees celsius okay so now when we look at the cooling tower itself the basic uh, purpose is to take water at 60 degrees celsius and cool it to 30 degrees celsius and then send it back to the condenser okay so that is what we are going to look at now so here is water hot water from the condenser as i said typically at 60 degree celsius or so and the cooled water is then returned back to the condenser okay, so this goes back to the condenser as you can see here now the cooling tower that i have shown here is called uh, an induced draft cooling tower because it has a fan at the top and the fan forces the ambient air through the cooling tower like this okay so there are openings on the side of the cooling tower and the ambient air is drawn in uh, to the cooling tower and forced to flow upwards like this by the fan okay so it's called an induced draft cooling tower so basically the hot water from the condenser comes down through these types types of shower nozzles so that the hot water comes down the ambient air flows up okay so as the ambient air flows up because it is cooler than the water uh, that is coming down the water evaporates okay the water evaporates and the temperature of the uh, air uh, then um, uh, increases and then it goes up and the uh, remaining water is cooled down okay as the water evaporates it draws enthalpy from the air and it cools down and collects at the bottom as uh, liquid water okay now some of the water that has evaporated is carried out by the by the air stream okay so we require make up water to make up for the water that leaves as water vapor okay and so what we typically have to do in this is to determine the amount of make up water for a given mass flow rate of uh, water from the condenser and temperature difference that has to be maintained so we cannot allow the uh, temperature of the water to become too high because normally the water is drawn from a lake or a river or ocean and thermal pollution is to be avoided so normally we cannot um, uh, allow the water temperature uh, to uh, go beyond 60 70 degrees celsius or so 60 would be i think what the upper limit okay so we want to maintain that so given these quantities how do we uh, um, uh, estimate the amount of air that is required or any other design quantity that we are interested in okay so let us summarize what i have said uh, so far uh, so this is an induced draft cooling tower because the fan draws the atmospheric air through the tower there is not forced uh, push through the cooling tower it is rather pulled through the cooling tower okay so the warm water from the condenser uh, comes downwards in the shower and it meets the upward draft of the atmospheric air which is drawn in through the openings provided along the sides of the cooling tower or circumference of the cooling tower because it's usually circular in cross section since the air is at a lower temperature some of the liquid water evaporates and the moisture laden air then goes up so the evaporate the water vapor is then carried up by the uh, by the ambient air and it leaves through the top so the rest of the water uh, cools down as a result of evaporative cooling and uh, collects at the bottom of the cooling tower make up water as i said is to be added to account for the uh, additional water vapor that leaves through the top so basically the cooling tower uh, design from a psychrometric perspective will involve two things one is mass balance of water another one is mass balance of dry air so let us look at an example 
cooling water enters the condenser of a steam plant at 30 degrees Celsius and leaves at 45 degrees Celsius with a mass flow rate of 3.75 times 10 raised to 7 kg per hour. Okay. You may recall that when we uh, did examples in the uh, in the module on Rankine cycle, uh, we took the condenser temperature to be 45 degrees Celsius. So, I have used the same value in this example also. Okay. It is then taken to a cooling tower where it is cooled before it is returned. Ambient air at 25 degrees Celsius, 45 percent relative humidity enters the cooling tower and leaves at 31 degrees Celsius fully saturated. Okay. Makeup water at 25 degrees Celsius is also provided. Determine mass flow rates of dry air and makeup water. Okay. Let us enter some of the information that is given here. So, let me erase some of this. So, uh, it comes from the condenser at a temperature of 45 degrees Celsius, leaves at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, makeup water at 25 degrees Celsius is also provided. So, the ambient air, let us, uh, I am sorry, let us go back and just quickly check this. Ambient air at 25 degrees Celsius and 45 percent relative humidity. So, 25 degree C 45 percent relative humidity is also provided. So, the air leaves fully saturated. So, that means phi is equal to 100 percent here. And the mass flow rate of uh, mass flow rate of the water is uh, also given 3.75 times 10 raised to 7 kg per hour. So, 3.75 times 10 raised to 5 kg per hour and this is also 3.75 times 10 raised to 5 kg per hour. I am sorry 3.75 correct I have done it correctly. Okay, so, this is the information that is available the state points are all marked here. So, um, notice that for state 1 for state 1 and state 2 and state 5 we need to go to the uh, steam tables and retrieve HF. Okay. So, HF has to be retrieved from the steam table for these states. For the remaining states, we will use the psychrometric chart. 25 degrees Celsius, uh, 45 percent. So, ambient air 25 degrees Celsius, 45 percent relative humidity, we can get H3 star and omega 3. So, here we have retrieved these uh, values from the steam table. Okay. Now, mass balance of water across the cooling tower. So, liquid water comes in at uh, 1 and 2, but the mass flow rates are the same. So, these two terms cancel out. Okay. We have makeup water coming in at 5, water leaving in the form of, I am sorry, entering in the form of vapor at 3 in the, through the ambient air and water leaving in the form of vapor uh, through the top of the cooling tower. Okay. So, if you rearrange, we get m dot w 5, which is the mass flow rate of uh, makeup water to be m dot a times omega 4 minus omega 3, 31 degrees, I am sorry that information, yeah, phi equal to 100 percent and 31 degree Celsius. So, that means uh, omega 4 is known, omega 3 is also known. Okay. So, omega 4 and omega 3 are both uh, known. So, we are, we are okay. Now, SFEE applied to the cooling tower gives us the following and if you rearrange then uh, we may um, uh, write it like this. So, omega 4, omega 3, H5 uh, everything is known right? except m dot a. So, we may write and we may evaluate m dot a to be 4.21 times 10 raised to 7 kg per hour. Okay, so, let us just, uh, let me just show it in a different green color. So, uh, H5 is known, omega 4, omega 3, H1, H2, H3 star, H4 star are all known. We have retrieved these from the tables and listed here, right. We have retrieved from the tables and listed here. So, m dot a may be evaluated. 
and once this is known using this equation, we may evaluate the mass flow rate of makeup water and that comes out to be 8.42 times 10 raised to 5 kg per hour. Okay, so, uh, this completes our discussion uh, of uh, psychrometry and psychrometric principles as applied to HVAC uh, and a couple of other applications. Okay. Again, bear in mind that no new concepts have been introduced, only new terms uh, which are specific to psychrometric applications have been introduced, terms like humidity ratio, uh, relative humidity, uh, dew point temperature and so on, uh, wet bulb temperature and so on. Um, the fundamental principles or uh, application of first law either for non-flow process or steady flow process and then mass balance, water either liquid or uh, vapor phase and dry air, mass balance of dry air. Okay, so, you should keep that in mind.